everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition, the first one for 2024. This is your host, Christopher, and here, as always, with my awesome co-host, uh, my good friend, Tom. Tom, Happy New Year, and welcome to the first Time Hop. Happy New Year, dude. Oh, 2024. It doesn't feel too different than 2023 so far. Yeah, give it time. <laughs> it's just getting warmed up. Uh, we had a chance to check out a screener that... Uh, just was released at the end of 2023 called Hellhounds. This was written and directed by Robert Conway. In the film, a female bounty hunter searching for an escaped murderer finds herself in the middle of a feud between rival werewolves and the hunters that are tracking them. Star, uh, stars Dana Kippel, Nathaniel Burns, and Eva Hamilton. And this thing, I'm sorry, I said it, it came out at the end of 2023. It actually hits digital January 9th, 2024. I got to read ahead of my notes before I start talking sometimes. It helps on occasion. I'm always interested whenever I see one of these things come around that someone's trying to do a werewolf film. I'm like, all right, you have my attention. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you're drawn to the werewolf and, and the classic monsters in general. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If it had been a vampire, you, you'd have been or, in on a, a vampire. Mummy, too. Yeah, I would have. I would have jumped Somebody on. Somebody actually much. dug up a mummy. You would be in on it. <laughs> yes, and I have watched quite a few mummy films, and I got to tell you that apparently is a really hard one to do <laughs> because they've all been really bad. <sighs> Not since Brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> I, I truly believe the mummy was like the last good mummy yeah, movie and, that I think I've seen. And only that first one. <laughs> yes. Exactly. The subsequent ones are kind of. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, so the trailer here was, showed us that, gave us the hint that there might be some werewolves. I was hoping that was not going to be a false uh, a lead, you know, a red herring or anything. They gave it a shot for a while. <laughs> they absolutely did. They were werewolves in this film. And that's probably the film's kind of weak point is the actual werewolf wisely not shown on screen as much as they probably could have yeah. for obviously for the budget and everything for what they did for the werewolves. But they still looked like these were people in costumes. It kind of it, it takes you back to like Lon Chaney and, you know, just gluing hair on on the face style, except these were, you know, the full masks. And I think it would have worked better had it been just hair on face with a little bit of uh, additional application or makeup applications or something doing the whole full head mask. Yeah. That's where it was really kind of, this isn't working for well, me. Oh yeah. And the body suits and all that. And then clearly they, uh, whoever made the, uh, the costume for the werewolf just, cookie cuttered all of them because when you had more than one werewolf, uh, they were the same werewolf. They were just another person in the same suit. That's what it looked like. I, I think there was one that had a slightly different colored fur, but Maybe. the flashes were brief wisely. They were not on screen long enough for you to really look at them. Yeah, the werewolf uh, makeup and costumes were definitely the weakest part of this film, I thought. Uh, a highlight, though, something I actually liked, I liked the, uh, the working in the uh, motorcycle gang. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit, you know, way back when we watched a, a Werewolves on Wheels. Oh, yeah, the Werewolves on Wheels one. Yeah, I remember that. Which, which was all motorcycle gang and, like, no werewolf. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, this one, I feel like it it worked a little bit better. I mean, uh, it was a little less motorcycle gang and more werewolf in this case. But I, I like that idea of just the roving motorcycle gangs and the idea that you know, they have to keep moving because they're werewolves. They don't have a really a place. And, and the fact that there's like, like, like these warring ones, they got the silver bullets mm -hmm. and the hellhounds. I kind of dug that aspect of the film. That had potential, but uh, as uh, I felt with a lot of this film, it, it didn't achieve much of its potential. No, that's that's the thing. You got the Hellhounds motorcycle gang, which off screen and before the film begins is effectively wiped out by one of the werewolves. And you got the silver bullets, which we hear about, and then we see two of them 
you kind of want that fight between these these gangs, and that's not there. No. We only see a couple members, and we hear about them, but we don't see them. I'm like, there's where all the potential I felt like really lied, and it it if it, it oh, you didn't give it to me. No, and then the, this bounty hunter element. You could have lifted her out of the film entirely and still gotten everything that you got in the film. So it, it was a storyline that had no point. I, unfortunately, I feel like um, all the storylines kind of ran parallel to each other mm-hmm. and without having really anything to do with each other. And then at the end, we're like, oh, let's tie that, you know, that we'll just tie them all together here. Uh, yeah, and... It's funny you mention that. It, it, this movie really had a whole lot of nothing happening during most of it, and then it rushes it all in the last ten minutes. <laughs> mm, yeah, a little bit. Um, I still feel like, as far as some of the screeners we've watched lately, I think this is one of the better ones. I, I was actually entertained. I liked a lot about it. And maybe I liked all the the bits and pieces. I I take each little elements of certain of the storylines of all the storylines that were running together, and I kind of dug it. I just wish they were a little bit more ingrained in each other. <laughs> As we've been running into, uh, we we get solid pieces here and there. I uh, just it was having a, I was having a hard time um, getting into it because anytime there was something decent, then it was also just met with just bland and not interesting <laughs> components. Uh, I have a hard time even describing it because it was just like even our hero werewolf. I don't know that I needed him to be sexy, but I didn't need him to be quite the slob he was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it worked because he was supposed to be, well, at least the impression I got is he was just an older werewolf. He's been around for who knows how long. He's kind of old, he's tired, and he's grumpy, and he's kind of let himself go a little bit. And now he finds himself having to fight for, you know, werewolf kind to battle this Lucilla, uh, this also hundreds of years old, but comes across as a young woman. So, I don't know, maybe... Well, I was under the impression she's the one that turned him, too. I'm not sure. I don't. I didn't get that impression. No. See, that was a... That was, it's, it's possible. That was the dynamic that at least I kind of took away from it. Um, but but where, where I'm going with this is so... Uh, our early stuff is the... The bounty hunter, the 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 hot girl bounty hunter, who who comes across his trailer to ask questions and all that, and we he doesn't reveal anything to her right away by any stretch, but uh, he murders a man in front of her basically while still kind of threatening her, and, and then it all turns in, in, in a heartbeat, and all of a sudden they're buddy buddy, and they're doing everything together, and. and like, why? <laughs> like, why are you now hanging out with this uh, clearly sketchy dude <laughs> um, who hasn't actually presented any useful information to you and killed a person, still kind of also threatening you, but now you're just going to do everything together like you've been bosom buddies and like, eh, it's just sat weird. <laughs> Yeah, well, that information that he does provide her is what le- is what is going to lead her to the guy that she's hunting down, who happens to be involved with this Lucilla. I don't know. It, it, there was a lot of it that just it, it did. I like. I don't know why the things that are happening on my screen are happening. <laughs> I think maybe I'm was just a little bit more enamored with the ideas that they came up mm-hmm. with in this and. This kind of takes me back to, if you could pull it off, maybe with a little bit better budget, this would be like, you could do a series about, you know, the roaming werewolf or something like that. Although I think there was, wasn't there a a werewolf series in the 90s? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to say there was, and yeah, that didn't go too well, so. 
maybe the idea is better than the execution, no matter how you how you do it. Now, now I'm just picturing um, uh, Renegade, except with, <laughs> except the pretty long haired guy is also a werewolf. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's exactly what you'd end up with. <laughs> Good point. Now, that would work in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I so yeah, I think I'm just kind of enamored with the with the idea and the universe that they created even more than I am with how they showed you that universe. You have a soft spot for werewolves in general anyways. So, as long as they put a good faith effort in it's already going to get a little notch up on your <laughs> on your rating system yeah possibly well you got to admit for an independent film to try to pull something like this off that takes a lot of guts oh no I, absolutely like uh i, I mean granted uh, they're their trans they did try to do kind of sort of a transition which when you watch a good werewolf movie that's that's part of what you're looking for is you want a solid transition from human to werewolf and they they started off okay and then just used the iPhone mer- uh, merge tool to get you the rest of the way there or whatever they use they, they they started by giving you makeup technique and, and all of that and having the actor kind of writhe around. And then it went to a quick morph. And I'm like, OK, I get it. You got no budget that you did as much as you could. And that was probably more expensive than what you dared to do, even for that part. But it's still kind of like, eh, OK, I'm not in that anymore now. <laughs> and now you got the guy in the bear costume. Yeah, it definitely takes you out of it a little, a little bit, bit when uh, they they start doing the morph because yeah, they did do some where it looked like you know they gave him some the the, the janky teeth yeah. and it looked like they may even like extend it like yeah, his the uh, hair started forming in spots where it wasn't before, especially since the younger guy was fairly smooth. <laughs> right. Yeah, and 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 new to this whole werewolf thing and all that. No, I I, I agree with you. It just the morph, while obviously. A budget constraint throws you out. Of it it kind of does, and then not that we're going to give anything away, but it, it even ends with a lame joke. I would have been okay with a, the the the, uh, the the full house style ending that we had with 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 the with the biker werewolf and the and the body go, or the uh, the bounty, bounty hunter. hunter. Oh, and this was the dig. <laughs> I couldn't get out of my head once we had uh, the big burly dude who was clearly a werewolf and the bounty hunter. And I'm like, somebody got high while watching dog, the bounty hunter and came up with the idea of of (laughs) turning him into a werewolf. And this was how they, this was the closest thing they got. Yeah. Aside from Kevin, the young kid. Oh, the name uh, thing too. Oh my God. (laughs) What's that? There's there's a part in there where uh, uh, um, our our burly uh, older werewolf is saying, "There's a problem with your name, Kevin. Kevin just doesn't work." And he just he's I'm gonna stick with Kevin. And nothing about that sequence worked at all. But they made a thing out of it. I'm like, yes, yeah. I I think the young kid Kevin there, as far as the cast goes, maybe the weakest. I, I didn't mind the cast. I thought no. they all did pretty good, especially uh, Nathaniel Burns, who played Alias, the our our hero yeah. werewolf. I dug him. I really liked no, him. No, uh, he was good. Uh, Ava Hamilton as Lucilla, she was fine. I mean, for what she... But yeah, everyone else I, I thought did pretty decent job. The uh, the three captives, or captives, I should say. Yeah. I know they felt like independent film <laughs> casting call. The, the yeah, they, they, they felt like uh, they were related to the <laughs> the crew in some fashion. <laughs> Possibly. I didn't dig into the credits to see who was related to who. <laughs> no. But yeah, Nathaniel Burns, I think, was definitely the highlight. I, I really liked him in this, and I could have watched more of him. You could have made this movie all about him. 
I think I'd be like even more into this. Film. Yeah, a little re- retooling. Uh, well, he, th- this is another one and hearkening back to uh, uh, what was our uh, uh, lion lion girl film. Oh yes. Um, there, there there was some thrown in nudity that just seemed thrown in so that we could do it. <laughs> Right, in, including with Nathaniel. <laughs> yeah, well, he fortunately just remains more or less. It's implied nudity yeah. for him. Eva Hamilton is the one that definitely goes and and, and shows off uh, some some goods. Yeah, but but no, like the bar sequence where we have to have some women dancing on the bar didn't need to be there. And then somebody just wandering around topless. <laughs> It's definitely, there is definitely gratuitous nudity because that's what gets people to <laughs> buy the discs, and, and, I think. And I suppose in some hardcore biker bars that does happen, but it just seemed like it was a, uh, it was an unnecessary stretch. Some of the women that were in that bar, I don't imagine being in hardcore biker bars. No, <laughs> no so yeah, I, these are the kind of things I know what you were going for. I just don't know that you pulled it off. I would still give this a tentative recommendation to check it out. If it comes across your streaming service or you want to try something, I'd, I'd give this one a go. It, there's been a lot worse out there. I know that's not exactly a, a, a raving <laughs> <laughs> recommendation. Um, yeah, you could that you could do worse than this film. But no, I think this one has... A little bit of promise. It has some highlights, and it has enough that make you go, I, I might be willing to see more from this group. Sure. Yeah, uh, maybe think through your uh, plot a little, bit, a little bit more. But, uh, but no, there there was potential here, and, and it's a fun enough watch, especially if you uh, you could misty the thing a little bit. So, if you got friends and you want to watch a, a, a cheesy uh, werewolf movie, this will do. Whatever your flavor, I think this one's worth uh, checking out. Uh, as I said, it hits digital January 9th, 2024. So by the time you hear this, I think it'll just be about out. Um, yeah, check it out. And if you watch it, come back and let us know what you think. Drop us an email at timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com. Or follow the link in the show notes to all our social media sites, and you can leave comments there. We'll be back in a week with a full episode. Uh, Hope everyone had a wonderful new year, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. See ya.